Hi, everybody. My name is Curtis from the Library of American Comics, and you are listening to and watching LOAC TV. Uh, we have a great episode here for you today. I have a couple special guests that you're going to want to meet, and I'm going to bring them on here. Welcome, Dean Mullaney and Bruce Kenwell. Hi, everybody. Hi, gentlemen. Hi, Hi how? I think this may be the first time that we have been in a in a room together. <laughs> At least I think. Well, uh, such as it is. Yeah, I mean, virtual this isn't really room. a room. It's a <laughs> room. Two it's states and two countries later. There That's you right. go. So I want to do some quick introductions with the two of you, and then we're going to get into the meat of what we are going to talk about, which I'm sure all of you listeners are here uh, for anyway. So, uh, Dean, introduce yourself quickly for us. Hi, I'm Dean. <laughs> You want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I'm the, the creative director of the Library of American Comics and Euro Comics, and uh, Bruce and I and Lorraine, since about 2006 or seven, have produced probably 250, 300 different books. Wonderful. And Bruce, how about you? Introduce yourself. And uh, I'm Bruce Canwell. I'm the chief cook and bottle washer at the Library of American Comics. So, uh, you know, I wind up um, writing and editing a lot of the, uh, the frontline material to uh, our line of books. Um, and for those people who've tuned in before, you probably heard me going on and on and on about uh, Secret Agent X-9 and uh, Alex Raymond a few months ago. That's right. And I'm Curtis. I do a lot of the uh, online communications and uh, work on the For Better or For Worse series. So, uh, yeah, we are excited to talk about something very special today, a brand new edition. I'm going to bring up a picture here of Terry and the Pirates. We're calling this the Master Collection. Yes. <laughs> this has been uh, something that's been in the works for um, an, a couple of years now, right, Dean? Yeah, we've been, you know, we, we, we've been reprinting the original 2000s Terry, six Terry editions uh, continually. So we've kept them in print for the last 14 or so years. And as we let them all slip out of print, because one of our trips to Ohio State, we came across these giant scrapbooks of Milton Kniffs that contained the Color Sunday proofs for almost the entire run of Terry. Uh, we didn't know they existed. They were not available for us or anybody to, in previous editions. So this will be the first time everyone's going to see these pristine, beautiful prints. I mean, they're, they're just fantastic. I mean, I've read Terry every couple of years for the last 15, 20 years. And looking at these, th these pages make me want to cry because they are so absolutely beautiful. No Terry fan, no Kniff fan, no comics fan really can afford not to have it. It's really that beautiful. So I just want to welcome everybody who's watching us live here. Feel free to uh, leave a comment in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, you can leave a comment in the chat. If you have questions to ask, go ahead and ask them. Uh, we're here to, to talk about this book series and, uh, and, and answer any of the, the burning questions that you may have. Uh, now, Dean, tell us a little bit about how you've divided up these volumes. How many volumes are there going to be, and what are the contents? There's 12 volumes. The first, you know, the script started in October 1934. So the first book is the end of 34 and all of 35. And then the next uh, 11 books are year by year. And then we have a bonus 13th book, which is Bruce's Baby, which tells you everything you ever wanted to know and needed to know about Milton Kniff's Terry and the Pirates. Wonderful, we'll, we'll about, circle back. The early editions that we did, they were the smaller half page Sundays. These are full tabs. So it's like you know, picking up the Sunday New York news and looking at Terry the way it was meant to be. Uh, the way Kniff drew it for his hometown newspaper. Uh, we'll get back to volume 13 a little later on in the video. Uh, Bruce, do you have anything you want to say about the organization of, of these strips here? Um, well, um, year by year, step by step, inch by inch, um, you'll be getting three dailies to a page. Uh, and then, of course, every Sunday will be a full page uh, in and of itself. Um, and, and as your graphic shows up on, on screen, 
our original oblong uh, Terry's um, were uh, we're using the half page Sundays uh, and now we'll be able to uh, to go uh, uh, 11 by 14 14 being the height yeah. and so uh, the tab Sundays bigger better brighter bolder and uh, you know uh, each each volume in a uh, in a hard covered edition and each daily strip um, should have its uh, its daily title that um, uh, used to appear in newspapers, um, right. you know, of the period. So we've got some uh, examples. Uh, we've got some examples of that to show in a little bit as there well. You go. So I mean, this really is this really is the 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 master collection, the uh, the 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 ultimate edition, based on the technology and the information that we have today. It's really tough to picture um, a better package for Terry and the Pirates than this. Now, this this image here shows just how much bigger this book is going to be the same width as the old style terry but the height it's like looks almost double the size there now dean you have a visual aid for us just so we can get um a good look at uh, how actually big this is okay this is a half page of a sunday the the famous checker sunday with captain blaze and this was as the size exact size that we reprinted it in the early edition now this will be the new one can you hold those up side by side for us let's see so we have a yep yeah, definitely a bigger bigger panels bigger size and can the color is just incredible the difference in the color yeah, I have some color examples that we'll show in a little bit more detail later. Um, we've already got one wow from Amsterdam. We have uh, Zorin tuning in from the Netherlands. That's pretty cool. Hey, Zorin. Uh, okay, well, how, how about the book cover, Dean? Can you show us that book cover? Okay, well, this is the volume two. And the cover, but this is how big the series is going to be. It's so big. <laughs> I've got a back up to the 50 yard line. That's amazing. You can see the whole cover. That's a great panel of Pat and Terry. Because uh, we go. The Dragon Lady wants to play with guns. We'll show our little marksmanship. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my favorite panels in the entire series where <laughs> Burma, Burma calls the Dragon Lady a double crossing tramp. I mean, what's, what's, what's better than that? Wonderful. A triple crossing tramp? <laughs> and then the famous uh, farewell Sunday, Kniff's last Sunday page. Oh, hold on. Let me get that. Oh, yes. Wonderful. For the 12th volume, right? This is, this is for volume 12. Yeah. yeah. But that's how, I mean, it, it's ludicrously wonderfully gigantic <laughs> uh okay let's keep on going with some of these pictures here oh we do have one comment from jeff he says one per year possibly two so we don't have no, to wait for make 12 it years three. make it three we're yeah we'll talk about the release schedule in a little bit uh because we are going to kind of get these out in a, a little bit more rapid su succession than than you would expect so uh, we'll talk about that he jeff also wants us to talk about the arrangement with loic and clover which we'll address a little bit later as well but let's keep on looking at some of the these pictures here dean tell us about this this is this the um overall picture if you take if you take all 13 volumes and put them on your bookshelf it's going to form that in this entire image so each the little white lines you see going uh, up and down that shows you the breaks between volumes. So the very first one will have just a let the first strip and the second volume. By the time you get 13, you've got the complete picture. So you have to buy and collect every single one or you're gonna have a missing strip. <laughs> what are you gonna do then? Okay, and we have a good spine size comparison as well. We can see the old volumes here and then uh, all of the new ones here. This looks. This is going to look so good on your bookshelf. 
you, you're going to need to have <laughs> really tall shelves to put these on your bookshelf. But once you do, it's man, it's going to be amazing. Oh, come on, everybody's got an oversized bookshelf. That's, you, know, you just got to <laughs> make sure you have enough room. That's all. The yeah, you can put these right by your uh, Flash Gordons and your Polly and your pals, and the uh, and the Toth books. <laughs> they can all go on the shelf together. Sure. Okay, let's take a look at some of these dailies. This is what a um, a, a double page spread in the book is going to look like. We're going to have right. So one... each da each daily will be ten inches wide, and then on the original, you know, I think you've got a slide coming up. But on the original, our original edition, I think they were about seven and seven eighths or something. But these are a full ten inches wide, has a date and it has a title on each strip, and they're made from proofs. These whole first several years are all from rescanned proofs that were, were not available before this. And here is a comparison of the, the size of the, the bottom here is the size of our original Terry editions compared to how big they're going to be in the new edition. Yeah, look how much easier it is to read the text even. And, then, and then plus see all the detail in Kniff's art. And there's our friend Captain Judas showing up in the last panel, little rat. <laughs> <laughs> I just also want to uh, actually. I got another example here. Here's another example. Um, let, let's zoom in a little bit, as we can see some of the quality of the line work in here as well. Um, like you can see, just the um, you can see Pat's face details just better, and the the quality of the zip tone in the background is a lot more crisp and clean. Uh, and then little mistakes like this up here are missing from the cleaner version here. So there's a lot of uh, really, really great quality material like from these new scans. Oh yeah, you can see kind of the stuff on the wall back here as well, missing from the new version. And don't forget the Batman title at the top. Bam! Bam, oh, Zoe! Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Yes, these were all missing from our older editions, so it's nice to have that in there. That's something that I loved about your Essentials books, uh, that you always had the titles at the top of the Essentials strips. Here's a copy of the of our Sundays. The colors are so, so bright. Let's zoom in a little bit on this too. We can see how clear the image is coming through here. Yeah, all those thin lines that he's using at this point, and uh, everything shows up. Nothing gets clogged up and muddy. Uh, they're just look at the, like the yellow background on this. Usually, those would either be dirty, you know, in a newspaper. They'd either be printed dirty or they would uh, be printed way too yellow and way too hot. This is the way Kniff did the coloring and you know, to giving them to the engraver. Look at the blush on the blade, on the dragon lady's cheeks, just gorgeous. Yeah. and the, the 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 shine on the knife, like right, and all those little white, um, you know, the background above the Captain Blaze's head, all that stuff, in most printed versions, just plugs up. It absolutely looks fantastic. Okay, I've got a color comparison. Just the, oh man, the rich tones in this, I just love it. Oh, that's a repeat, I've got some repeats in here. Okay, here's a comparison of, uh, of the old edition Terry's versus the new editions. So the, 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 the top tier is uh, the old edition, the second tier is the new one. And the same Third with the bottom here. Look at the bottom one, the bottom two, the last panel. Look at Pat's. Um, look at look at the dragon lady's skin tone on the bot, the very bottom one. It's, it's it's beautiful. It's just exactly what it was supposed to be. Look at Ter look at look at Pat's jacket. Um, the last panel, Pat's jacket is a light blue, which uh, you know, is in shadow, which is and look at the background color. Oh man, look at the sand. The 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 different shades on the sand is completely lost. Yeah, with yellowing newsprint. 
now uh, not to put down Bruce and uh, me for our work, you know, for almost 15 years ago. Uh, those but those original books are fantastic, and I'm proud to have them in my collection too. Exactly right. It's it's just yeah. if you can get better, you know, get it. <laughs> and then here's a size comparison of uh, of the actual size from the old editions, the half page, and then the full page. You can see the it's, it's almost twice as big. It's incredible. Now, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the the images? Because I know that you know some when these were arranged for the half page, they had to extend some of these panels. So technically, it's kind of less art in in this in the in this new version. But this is the original the original yeah, version. Yeah, they were originally, originally drawn as tabs, and then they were photostatted and then pasted up on boards. And Kniff, at the beginning it was Kniff, and later it was Assistance, would fill in a little bit of the extra work. Because you can see on the, on the, on the half tab, the half page, there's extra work, you know, on the, either the left or the right. And it's, not, it's, nothing, it's never anything important. Right. It's nothing essential to the story, because obviously he wanted uh, readers to, to get the whole story, regardless of what their newspaper printed. And in terms of his composition as such, he co he composed it for this full, the full tab version. Yeah, but you know, I, I know I didn't, it never bothered me reading a half page. I've always loved no, a half course, page. No. I agree. One of the reasons I like a half page, and, and in our original edition, was you had three tiers, three dailies, opposites, three tiers of Sunday. So they read very smoothly that way. Mm -hmm. um, but in this archival ultimate master collection, um, would, the tab is the only way to go. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. This is the thirteenth volume. The special is called Odyssey on the China Seas. So Bruce, it's like you Bruce Canwell and Dean Mullaney on it. I want to know which one is Bruce, and which one is Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, why don't you tell us a little bit about this volume? Well, uh, in our original series from, you know, uh, starting in 2007, we had introductory material in each book that covered the two-year period that, that spanned each, each volume. And this time around, we decided that we would provide the strips book by book without commentary and and we would wind up putting our text feature into um, this bonus 13th book if you will and really um we just never really stopped researching terry and the pirates for the you know the the 15 years that library of american comics has existed um you know, I think I, I think you'd agree, Dean. Our first trip to Ohio State to research Scorchy Smith uh, had uh, a lot of revelations about Kniff, just because of the relationship between Sickles and Kniff. So the overlap that we found, and then looking back at the at the material that they had for the Kniff art book that we did later on down the line, and then when we started Steve Canyon doing all that research continually brings you back to finds about uh, about terry and we've we've uncovered more artwork than we had before and uh and so this 13th book it does as, as will eisner and others would say it does refry some of the text from the initial series but i would tell you in this new book there is i forget how exactly how much but i want to say it's about 35 to 40 percent new text material on top of the uh the new supporting artwork that we found yeah and if you look at the art if you look at the artwork on this the, no go back to the last page Curtis. the bottom is this is front and no next that's it and it's the front and back of a, of a uh, sales brochure promoting Terry to sell, you know, licensing rights for Terry. That we had never seen before. And the, um, scroll down another page or two. 
that one there. Look, the, the one on the upper right is one of my favorite new edition, <laughs> new pieces in the book. Is in in the nineteen eighties, Fred McMurray sent this to Kniff, saying uh, uh, something something to the effect of, uh, "I'm glad yeah. that I was the model for." Um, yeah, Pat, I think uh, it's Pat. I think it's this is me when I look like Pat Ryan. Yeah, so <laughs> Kniff modeled them on on uh, Fred McMurray and fans who remember my three sons and God knows what else he was in. How about uh, Double Indemnity? Double Indemnity. How about it? Yeah. Anyway, it's just it just these kind of little extra finds, just the things that Bruce and I just jump up and down. We jump on the table, do a little fun whoopee dance. Okay. Now, so why don't, you why don't you recreate that for us right now? <laughs> <laughs> just jump right up on the table and do the fun little whoopee dance. Go ahead. I'm older than you, so you have to do what I say, not vice versa. <laughs> well, it's just a fun. <laughs> Anyway, now, Bruce, uh, go, I, I, I cut you off about the, the... No, no. I mean, that's, um, you know, that's, that's um, I guess, the largest part. Although, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, something else this 13th book will um, we'll take a look at, which is Terry is very much a product of its time. Its time is the 1930s and the 1940s. And it's uh, it's set in a milieu and with a cast that um, is uh, what we would call today culturally diverse, but at the time was exceedingly culturally diverse. Um, but as society has evolved, um, what what was perceived at the time as being um, relatively forward thinking now does not always look quite as forward thinking so this 13th book has a section um toward the back end that uh that spends a couple thousand words trying to talk about terry in the 21st century and and try to to look at some context there and um and i think that's that's an important consideration um to be able to, if you will, step back in time and recognize that you can't apply a contemporary lens to everything. You have to assess what does this material look like in and of its time to the best that people understand that time today. We didn't live it, none of us were there, but to the best that we understand it, what was it like to, in its time and, and to appreciate that for what it is, even if perhaps in some ways we've moved beyond that. Yeah. Um, we've moved beyond um, writing the way William Shakespeare used to write. If you went back and could read the original folios, Shakespeare's language is considerably different than ours today. That doesn't mean we turn our back on William Shakespeare. And so, um, you know, I think um, that, that that needs to be said, given some consideration and i think we try to do that uh as i say in the in the back section of uh, of that 13th book yeah so rather than simply put a one paragraph disclaimer saying that these strips are created in an earlier time and contain racial stereotypes um bruce and i decided we wanted to put an addendum on the book to, there's a, to give it a more nuanced approach to dealing with you know reading those reading those strips today and it, when we're in a completely different world. I, I, don't, I, I don't think anyone would think that Milton Kniff uh, had malice towards Asian characters. Um, I think he may have had condescension using you know, characters as, as prompts for gags, um, but his attitude changed and evolved and the, the characters in Terry, even like little like Connie, over time, he becomes more of a patriot. He's, he's, he's written out of the script for the most part for a good long while. And when he comes back, he's, in the, he's a corporal in the army. And, he, and right. he has to be taken very seriously. So we just felt we needed to address it um, because it, it's not a simple question. It's not a simple answer, but it deserves right. to be in there. Okay, well, why don't we move on and talk about uh, the question that Jeff had about the new arrangement with Loak and Clover. 
Um, I'm sure a lot of people actually have been asking us, well, what does this mean for, you know, for better, for worse, and all these, and I think... Well, I think for it's better, safe. for worse. Yeah, for better, for worse. And Steve Canyon. And, you know, strips that are continuing are going to be, they'll keep coming out from LOAC and IDW. Uh, Terry is the first of uh, what we hope to and expect to be a long relationship with Clover. Um, Ted Adams, one of the, you know, two founders of Clover. And I go way back to when I first hired Ted at Eclipse Comics back, I don't know, probably the early 90s, maybe. Um, so we have a long personal relationship and we enjoy working with each other. And uh, so we thought this was a good time to launch a new venture and we'll still be working through IDW and maybe some independent online uh, art, you know, books as well. Yep. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't even realize that Amer Library of American Comics isn't owned by IDW. It's owned by you, Dean. And right. so um, it's not exclusive to anybody. We can, we can you know, take it anywhere. And so we're going to try out a few different methods of, uh, of publishing. Our, our goal remains to publish as many archival comic script reprint books as we can while we're still, our minds are still working <laughs> and our physical bodies still work. Um, and if it means you know working across different publishers and that that's what it'll be but the goal is what's important is re, is restoring and preserving the work it's not who published it it's not even who edited it or who did it, did production work it's about the work we are secondary we are subservient to the work and probably so and you're still going to get the same quality of material that you saw in other loac books uh, and so these books, these new volumes are going to be top notch as well. Um, however, let's talk a little bit about the the price, because that's one of the big questions when people started seeing the solicits pop up online. It's like it's got a hundred and twenty dollar price tag for volume one. Uh, and that was like oh, turned a lot of people off. Oh, I'm not spending that or, you know, 12 volumes or whatever. But can I tell you that uh, we have a special, a special deal for everybody here I'm gonna pull up my stream what way let me see here there are three ways to buy terry and the pirates the master collection at cloverpress.us that's their website we are going to be offering uh through clover uh, volume one as you can see down at the bottom here volume one's going to be 95 dollars rather than the 120. I mean, you could buy these off of Amazon or you could go to your local comic shops, but if you want this uh, special publisher rate, we are we're going to be selling it for 95 bucks. That was a little bit more expensive because it's got a higher page count. So volumes two to 12 are going to be 85 with a special rate. Volume 13 is going to be $60. That's our standard pricing um, at Clover. Uh, you'll have to factor in some shipping costs. We are working our best to try and get some good deals there as well, and especially for international uh, international buyers. Um, I was being in Canada myself. One of the questions I was sure to ask was, well, what about those people who aren't in the United States? <laughs> How is shipping going to be like for them? But we're working on that. Uh, however, you can get a special bundle if you want uh, Volume 1 and 13 together for 120 bucks. So you do get a discount there. Um, and then you can also pre-order volumes two and 12 for 85. And if you buy this bundle, you'll get a special comic page. Now, Bruce, can you tell us, I mean, uh, Dean, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we're, we're creating a 16 page comic section like it would be in your Sunday newspaper. And it would be, it's all of contemporary artists doing their riffs on Terry and the Pirates and Milton Kinnick. I don't know if you can see this, let's see. This is a, a, the top tier of a, of a Terry Sunday, and then a version drawn by Francois Avril. Down the bottom, can you see this? Yeah, pull it back a little bit. There you go. Okay, the top one is obviously a Kniff, um, and the bottom one is Serge Clerc, the great you're a French artist. I think he's a French artist. Um, so that those two just take do a take a Terry Daly and do their own version. Other people like Howard Chaikin have created an all new 
I'm not going to show you the whole thing because you know, <laughs> that's cheating. But you can see it's Terry and the Pirates and, and whose name is in there, but my old yeah. pal Howard Chaikin. Um, <laughs> nice. There's other ones by, uh, here's one by Bert Pan. He took a, this Dragon Lady Burma page and drew his own version of it. We have uh, Flock, who is a uh, New Yorker cartoonist, did Pat Ryan. And then Bruce Canwell, the guy down in the bottom of the screen, and Lee Weeks are creating a, an original Terry Sunday page. And Trina Robbins is going to be doing a paper dolls. Uh, Michael Cho is doing a, a Sunday page. Diana Tamblin with Jay Bone is doing a, a full page. Um, we just got a uh, we just got a new pinup piece from Butch Geis. Butch Geis. Oh Paul yeah. Pope's work, Paul Pope's working on a Sunday oh. page. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Just pe different people doing, just saluting Milton Kniff and Terry and the Pirates. Oh, and, and just to um, just to kind of whet your appetite for it, uh, what Lee and I are doing, if you remember when uh, after Pearl Harbor in the strip, Terry disappears for quite a stretch because uh, the focus is on Pat and Normandy and the Dragon Lady. And then Pat and the Dragon Lady fade out, and Normandy and her little daughter Merrily have a, a an adventure behind enemy lines themselves, and they get rescued and brought to um, to uh, an army hospital where it happens that Terry Lee is recovering, and the only thing we know about what happened to Terry was you picked up some shrapnel while you were in the Philippines. Uh, Lee and I are going to attempt in one page to give you a lot of background as to how Terry, how Terry got to the Philippines, why he was in the Philippines, and how he picked up that trap. Wonderful. That's fantastic. It's exciting. It's really <laughs> exciting. Okay. Also exciting is... So, Curtis, the, how do people get that? The only way to get that is... Is, is to buy this bundle. The volume one and 13 bundle will come free. That You'll get this 16 page uh, comic section for free. Or you could also get it by getting a subscription. We're, this is something new that we're testing out. We are offering a subscription for all 12 volumes at an even lower discounted price. $900 for all 12 volumes. That's $75 per volume. Uh, you'll only be charged when each volume ships, so three times a year. And you'll get the 13th volume thrown in for free, plus the 16-page comic section for free. So this is a tremendous deal for those of you who uh, who want to save a little bit of cash. We, we would appreciate uh, the subscriptions because that helps us plan printing numbers and such and know how many people are kind of in it for the long haul. So this is something we're trying out new. And, and, we, and, you know, readers know that we're, we're in it for the long haul, too. We've already finished the first seven books and book 13 are already completed. And uh, we're almost finished working on volume eight. So we'll, we're, we're going ahead and are going to have the entire series done within the next couple of months. And then we'll just push them, you know, publish them every three months. So you don't have to worry about when and if they're coming out. They, they are definitely coming out. And in fact, those people who were with us for the long haul 15 years ago may remember when our first Terry and the Pirates volume came out, there was uh, speculation about whether or not we would see the whole series through or not, because strip reprints back then were, um, were so new. Um, there just wasn't a lot of activity in that market when we jumped into it. And uh, obviously, we came through and uh, and and... All six of those volumes came out uh, as we had promised them on schedule. So, you know, we're equally committed uh, to, to this series and, uh, and maybe even more committed to this series than we were to the original, Terry, if that's possible. Because we just know more now than we did 15 years ago when we were, mm -hmm. you know, babes in the woods sort of feeling our way forward. And those six books are all out of print. And, uh, you know, you, look, you look up on eBay or ABE books and you start seeing – those prices are getting jacked up. So it'd even be cheaper to buy the new ones than what people are charging for the uh, now out of print old ones. Yeah, so $75 per volume for the subscription is 
pretty decent. And you'll you the first volume is going to come out in March, and it will ship with volume thirteen. So you'll get volume one and volume thirteen at the same time. Um, let's see, we have a question here. Joaquin says nine hundred dollars, hey. including shipping. You that wish. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ship, shipping costs will are not included in that price. Unfortunately, this is just the price for the book. So, and Clove is figuring that out. We don't have the shipping information yet. Yeah, and then Bob has a question here. Says, guys, according to the Clover Press website, there's an additional Black Friday discount. Well, you beat me to the punch, Bob, because we were just about to talk about that too. Oh, wait, um, there's more. <laughs> there's more. Here are the prices. We are having a special Black Friday slash Cyber Monday weekend sale where we are going to have the very first volume on sale for a special $60 price. $60? This, this weekend only, $60. <laughs> or you can get the bundle of volume 1 and 13 plus the bonus 16-page comic section for $90. $90? Or you could subscribe the, for the subscription for the same $75 per volume, but we've brought the price down to match the $60 volume one sale price. So, and you'll still get volume 13 to 16 and the 16 page heart. comic section. <laughs> Crazy Curtis, his prices are insane. Sale, sale, sale. <laughs> but this is, this is our gift to you, all of you loyal LOAC followers, because we know that these are not cheap books, but we want to make sure that, uh, that you know, you, you who are listening to this live stream here and who've been following us for a long time, uh, get in on the ground level and get in uh, at, a good, at a good starting place. And so once, you, hoping... once you have volumes 1 and 13, you know what you have to do. You've got to <laughs> leave that blank space and fill them in one by one. That's right. Uh, and, you know, we also we, we all know the realities of uh, finance and the market is there's a fear. There is a genuine fear of missing out. You've got to be careful. You know, so many people will say with strip reprint books or any comics they want, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait and buy it later. And then it's out of print and then the price gets jacked up by the back issue dealers. Um, so it's a it's a real concern. I mean, we used to keep all the LOAC books in print with IDW, and over time they they decided they did not want to keep every every book in print all the time. We're going to keep Terry in print as long as we can, but it's always obviously a smart move to buy them as soon as you can, and but with such a great price, and and especially. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much, you know, folks who are, who are tuned in today are looking at, at other archival reprint series uh, by other companies for their own backlog of material, perhaps. Um, you know, we don't have to mention uh, specific names, but um, there are a number of companies that have a large backlog and are doing a uniform series of, of releases. And... Um, and when you look at the price points that those books are commanding now as new releases come out, uh, our prices anywhere along the line are still very much um, in accordance with what other companies are doing. And they aren't giving you all the crazy discounts that Curtis just <laughs> outlined. So uh, you know, even at full price, we're not, um, you know, we're not uh, head and shoulders price wise above uh, the rest of the industry in, in terms of a uh, price point. So, you know, we're, we're, uh, but, but, you know, as, as we've been saying, the goal is we've got enough tiers of, of pricing here so that we hope that, you know, for the serious collector, there's a price point in here that will, uh, that will match your, your, your budget, your cash flow, uh, your interest level, um, and, and, you know, your dedication to, uh, you know, this project. Which, which we just think is really one of uh, uh, the first set of Terry's was, was an important addition um, to preserving comics history. And, and this in its own way is at least as important as that first run and in some ways more important.
Wow. Does anyone else have any questions? We're, we're going to stay online for just a couple minutes more to field any questions that you may have about these releases. Um, like we said, the first one's coming out in March, and then the plan is to do every, to release another every four months. And uh, so there's three volumes per year. So we'll have all of these volumes released fully in four years. Is that right, Dean? Is that the plan? Uh, Did I get that right? Did I get my uh, math right? Uh, three, three a year. Three a year. Four years. So let's see, three times four. <laughs> I think we got it right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, everybody will be able to, we don't have to wait a full 12 years before this whole series is out, which is fantastic. Okay, so uh, we will provide links uh, to the sale on, on the Clover website. Now the sale prices aren't uh, available yet because of course it's not Black Friday. So you're gonna have to wait till Black, the Black Friday Cyber Monday weekend in order for the, the discount prices to go online on cloverpress.us. But uh, stay, if you subscribe to our Twitter or Instagram or Facebook page, uh, we'll make sure that you know as soon as those, those sale prices go live. Yeah, and, and sign uh, up for the LOAC newsletter because we'll, we'll be releasing the info, even if you're not on social media, uh, we'll be releasing the information for the newsletter, right, Curtis? Yep, that's right. So all of that, it'll come straight to your inbox. Uh, you and can how sign do up they, for, How do they sign up for the newsletter? If you go to libraryofamericancomics.com and scroll down to the very bottom of the, the homepage, you can sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you'll... Or, or again, just follow us on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. All of the, those channels will be a, the places to find this new information. Okay, if, if, unless there's anything else that people want to say, I think that's uh, that's all we have for our live stream today. Dean, okay. Bruce, it was great chatting with you. Thank you, Curtis. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, we're all in the same room. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, you two stay on. Thanks, on, Curtis. Thanks, stay everybody. On, uh, you two stay online for a second, and uh, I'm going to play our closing theme music to to get us out of this episode. We got theme music. <laughs>